Home Capital Group is a stock to watch today. It's bouncing up about 10%. The company disclosed it has cut ties with 45 mortgage brokers after learning they falsified some of their clients' income data. Home Capital Group says it was tipped off to the discrepancies by an external source as early as last September. However, it opted not to reveal that information until now. Investors and analysts are eagerly awaiting to hear President Martin Reid on the conference call. That happens in less than an hour. Our next guest has a list of questions he wants answered. Doug Pollitt is an analyst over at Pollitt and Company. He joins us right now. Uh, just briefly, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts in a a company like uh, Home Capital, um, the numbers seem to be okay. The streets lining up, saying the numbers were great. We've got clarification now. Everything's good. Well, there might be some short covering today as well. There was no, you know, smoking gun. You know, there, nobody got chucked out of a window. So, you know, there may well be some, 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 you know, some, uh, some bet, you know, hedging and and, um, and what have you. It, you know, it's it's difficult to see what's real and what's not real with this story, and I think that's why everyone's anticipating the conference call so eagerly. Um, disclosure, and um, this happened, what would be now, quick math, eight months ago, six months ago, they had a couple reporting seasons in between, a couple reporting, you know, and an annual before, report, and an annual report, which was signed off by some auditor. Um, you know, what, why tardy disclosure and why the inconsistent disclosure? There have been reasons why, you know, they've said some things which just don't square. Um, there's those out there who are parsing every statement and trying to line things up, and things don't always line up. So why the tardy disclosure and, and um, you know, why not just let it all hang out, right? Um, so on the call at 10.30, what kind of questions would you want answered? What I would ask, and what, what I think what the questions, the answers would be interesting is, number one, why did it take an external source to flag these um, faulty applications, these falsified applications? And what does that say about their internal controls? Um, there was a Financial Post um, article a couple of weeks ago where in, uh, the executive said, from now on, they're going to separate their underwriting from their sales. You'd think they would have already been separated, okay? <laughs> so what does that say about the rest of the loans on their book? Have they done a thorough audit of everything on the book and not just what the, uh, the whistleblower, as he's been termed, pointed out? What does that say about the rest of their book? So that would be one question. When I look at the, just straight up, look at the financial report from yesterday, metrics that you tend to look at for financial companies, including uh, non-performing loans, anticipation of non-performing loans, all those numbers seem pretty small to me and manageable. Is that, is that a concern that they're so good? Uh, no, that's a good point. Maybe they're too good, you know? <laughs> You know, the other question that's been brought up, another question that's been brought up is, okay, so here they have, these, these mortgage brokers brought in, I think the number is about 5% of their book right now, okay? And these guys have been deemed to be unreliable suppliers of, of mortgages. Um, yet no provisions were taken on any of those mortgages. And some of them went upstairs to the CMHC to be secured, insured. Um, you'd think the company... And I've heard elsewhere that, you know, it has been a conservative company. It went, made it through the bust in the early 90s, unscathed. And, um, but to be conservative, wouldn't it make sense to make at least some token provision? Wouldn't that be a good idea? Again, financial institutions are all about confidence. Wouldn't that add confidence if they were to take some small provision? Instead, I think the provisions were, were, were down. Um, yes. Yeah, so yeah, so it light. seems to be an aggressive approach for a conservative company. So that would be another question. And a third one? Um, in so far as there's now, I think, admittedly, you know, more oversight in terms of, uh, you know, the, the applications. And there's, you know, to what extent will that act as a drag on future business? If they've got to go through everything with a fine-tooth comb, um, will, that, will that, you know, slow down business? Um, you know, on their website they say, oh, you get a loan in 15 minutes. That might not be true, but I mean, they, they make it clear that look how quickly we can do business. Um, will this slow things down? Will that act as a drag? Uh, look, we're at the, in our view, we're at the autumn season of this credit cycle. It's been a fantastic run, um, and, but it seems to be getting long in the tooth. You know, house, house prices, according to the venerable Ben Rabadou, he's done some very good work on this, house prices have risen much more quickly than incomes. That will drain the pool of quality credit out there, almost by definition. Um, will it be tougher and tougher to originate quality um, you know, mortgages? 
the one other thing is, and this is this is quite. We talked about this last night. There's been a real wobble in the loan to value numbers over the past. I went back eight quarters last night. Loan to value should be fairly stable. We figure their their churn in the book is about ten percent per quarter. They don't we're talking it. home capital. Home capital here. Home capital. Right. And it's been their stated loan to value for the last eight quarters has been anywhere between sixty seven point two and 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 sixty eight and a bit. Okay, for the last eight quarters, except for the March quarter. In the March quarter, it was sixty sixty point seven or down ten percent. Okay, that's a real anomaly out there. Okay, I mean, you don't move 10%. I mean, it's, it implies that the loan to value in the March quarter was on Pluto or house prices crashed, neither would likely happen. Um, I haven't seen it, but reportedly uh, on the 10Q, there was a restatement of their appraisal values for their loan book. I haven't seen the 10Q yet, but I've been told there's been a restatement on the 10Q for their appraised values. How did that happen? Was there some, you know, again, this speaks to internal controls. At this point, there are more questions than answers. I guess the final question is that Gerald Soloway is viewed as a good operator. I mean, this is a company he's managed. I mean, he's the, yes, if I'm not mistaken, the founder. I mean, big people uh, have great esteem for him. So this is all happening on his watch, uh, Martin Reed being the president, Gerald uh, Soloway the chairman. So that is a bit of a head scratcher. It begs the question, who's running the company? Right. And we will find out, or you will ask at 1030. Thank you very much, Doug Pollitt from Pollitt & Co. on Home Capital.